I even like the ROM so much that I put it on my tablet. I used to have CyanogenMod, Mod, and now I'm gonna switch it up to a new one called Beanstalk. But as you see here, I'm running CyanogenMod, so now I'm gonna go just looking what you can do with the interface, that was it. But then you go to the download ROM through ROM Manager, and I have to download Google Apps, so you have to, you know, download them in order for you to get the Play Store and all the stuff like that, and you can see it's downloading right there. So now, while it's that downloading, I'm gonna go into Titanium Backup and Backup Important Games and apps that I need instead of doing a whole backup of the ROM for important stuff that I want. So now I'll go into install once it's downloaded and everything. Go into Goo Manager. I use Goo Manager to download Beanstalk because ROM Manager doesn't have it. And as you can see now I'm adding a zip and the zip I want to add the Google Apps so that Google Apps will need to go with it so that it flashes both of them. That's all you. If you want to add something else, you can. But there's the backup ROM. In case you've never done it before, you should probably do it in case something messes up. And importantly, you want to push on wipe data and cache because if you don't, then you might have into a lot of force clothes and issues. So just make sure that's cleared up. And you can see I'm just going through the little dialogue right here, the BIOS, whatever you want to call it. But it's doing the flashing and it doesn't take long at all. I think it took like two minutes, three minutes at most, maybe even less. But it's very quick and that was done just like that. And then I'm going to go through this setup here after the first boot. And I already skipped that so you don't have to see that. And there's the home screen. So after that I'm going to go into the about tablet and you can see that I'm running on KitKat. The latest version. And it runs very very good. And the reason why I brought it to my tablet is because I love it so much on my phone. But clicking on the dark stock. Which is going to turn everything dark. Settings are dark. And here's all the interface you can change, all that stuff. But I always go to the Play Store first and re-download Titanium Backup to make sure that I can bring all those applications that I backed up. That is my way. I want to accept certain things here. And then I'm scrolling down to the very bottom. You will see the crossed out ones. Those are the ones that I backed up and they're not installed. So I can, you know, click on it and restore it. And therefore, Apex Launcher is always my choice of going back to and then it's done. You can see that it said it uh, restored and go home. It's going to give me the option to choose between launchers. I'm always going to select Apex. So you can see that's what I used to have before. Like I never left it for another ROM. And now I go to Super SU. Sometimes the ROM doesn't want to get permission to download Super SU and it'll work perfectly fine again. So status a battery icon. You can see that I'm going to change it up here. I change it to where the animation and the coloring will turn on red like that. You can change all the settings there. I'm not going to show you all step by step. Changing a few things there and you can see that brightness up and then I can go to the brightness down and it's very convenient. It's not that easy, but it's convenient. And if you want to double tap the notification area, you can see that it turns the screen off that way. Shortcuts. Here in the navigation, you see no shortcuts into it. But if I click plus, I can add shortcuts to the navigation pull down. Now I click select the camera and I'm going to select another app here, the gallery, and then go down. You can see I got the gallery and then I got the camera. So that I can click on them and it'll go right to them without having to go through my apps or the home screen. You just simply go to it. And you can reset and, you know, take them off and therefore they're gone. And then you go power widget. Now if you want a power widget up there like Samsung, well you can. Select that, now you got your power widgets right there. Now go to widget buttons and you can select a whole bunch of them in there. Whatever you would like. Yeah, I'm just randomly clicking on things just to like have them selected up there and you will see as scrolling through them. And you can click on them without having to go in an application and just toggle them on and off. And here's the actual toggle toggle like Android should have been. And I'm changing up and adding things there so I can go into my preferences of toggles. And you can keep adding as much as you can. And then we can change the tile look and colors in the background and transparency. If you want three in a row, you want five in a row, you will see that there's, it looks that way. A little small, so I kind of prefer four. I might go back to three, but four is good enough. And check this out. We have the option to remove the notification and navigation keys. So I can have a full screen instead of having these buttons down there accidentally being pressed in the games, you know, I can remove them, but I can slide up and they're back like voila. <laughs> it works really nice. So I like that little feature to hide them away. It should be a stock Android thing, but and now if you go into alerts and warnings, you can turn off certain alerts. I'm not gonna really go too much into it, but let's go to display animations. Now 
you can go to active display and active display I don't mess with it and then gestures where you can actually set certain swipes and finger swiping thing to open up at different applications I don't really need this but you can mess with it and then you get screen recording CRT animation which is the TV off animation with like this but if you want it to change it up a little bit you can do sideways or horizontal and you know I have a little different effect there I like that one so I'm gonna leave that one but then you got more custom system animations for individual settings list view is where you actually scroll through things and you will see the animation pop up like look at the icons right now being like popping up a little bit but my favorite is scale and I want to go to list view and I want to go into anticipate and overshoot and then you're gonna get this type of look I love it I don't know why I'm and I was going to security, check unknown sources so I can download non-Play Store applications. And another thing I always do, go to developer options and I make sure the developer is on. Android debugging is on. But look at those animations. <laughs> I'm gonna show you a little bit more here of animation movement here. I mean, it looks way better on a phone, but it looks big right now. But I promise you the animation make the ROM a lot better to look at. But you can change it all. I'm gonna change it a little bit here just to show you that there's ones that fold down like that if you prefer. And you know, mess with it by yourself and see which one you like the best. And then if you go to the power menu, you can actually set more toggles or switches into power. And I'm right here, this is how you add them, like expandable. You can do the screen record there. So that way I could actually do the screen recording. I hold the power and then I get to choose screen record. And here you see up there, I can stop it or show touches and that I'm doing a recording right now. I don't have everything installed yet, but everything I'm doing right now is being recorded and I want to press stop and it's going to render or process whatever and then I can click onto it just like that. And then I'm watching the video of the screen recording capture that I just did, which is really smooth surprisingly. And then we go into navigation bar, which we can actually rotate and change the buttons here where we get the back. I always like the back button on the right, so I always switch them and I can, you know, put the home in the right position or whatever. But you can also use custom applications where you can set anything you would like. And then if you go to the ring targets, when you pull up on the home, you know, you got your Google now, but you can set more. You can see a last application, which will switch to the last application I was to, which was that. And I can switch right back real easily like where I was and custom apps obviously you can set that and you will see that there I got Google rotate or uh, camera and I can obviously change them up like that beanstalk options I skip the rest and go all the way to miscellaneous and I go to review and I change some things there where I get that little button I can press and it dismisses everything and then we can see the RAM bar we can change the DPI which is like tablet mode or phone mode you can custom carry label where you will see it in your lock screen the cool loser a little things like that that could matter to you we go all the way back and we go to the halo section i don't really use it you can use multiple applications at once and notifications work really nicely with it you go to the south you will see what you can turn on and off and the display and lights which is a rotation i allow all angles to rotate and you will see daydream i always turn it off i don't want to use it and then performance, I always have it on on demand and the high performance and lock screen. Now we can go into the slider shortcut so what we see when we lock the phone. And then I don't want that there, so I you know reset and then now I gotta clear it up and I can you know easily just drop it on one side and you will see I can select shortcuts, applications, once and I also changed the icon actual look to it. I put it to like a clear white one look and so it matches the rest. Beanstalk won me over so fast, I really love it, and I think you should try it out for yourself. I even like the ROM so much that I put it on my tablet. I used to have Cyanogen Mod. I have to say that it is definitely the best 4.4 AOSB custom ROM here. I'm trying to say that I love the customizations that you can do on this thing. Like when I bring down this notification, I can change it all. You can see I got my all my different toggles here, and I love the text messaging. That look is all in the you know animation settings. I love how it just pops up like that. You could also go into the settings here in the messaging. She changed the themes. You can see you can change the contact font. You can change the image for the background, contact colors, the subject, the date. 
I mean, you're gonna have lots of customizations here. Messaging view, which is inside the messaging. You can show, you can take off the avatar if you don't want it to be in there. You could show the contact name, the message signatures, a bubble. If you don't want a bubble, you can change it to a hollow rectangle or more different things there. I mean, I'm not gonna show you, but you can tweak it around there, which looks real good. And more background stuff that you can individually set. And also, I'm gonna text myself here. And you will see that I'm gonna get a notification right there. Uh, that doesn't come with it. That's actually a different application here, which is that one if you want it. Since I I want to review it, but it's called Pop Up Notification Free. Uh, that was part of this, but just imagine without that, you would see the message icon there. You can reply, read, or call right back. And if you press reply, you will be in any application. It won't actually exit you in the application and get a pop up right here. And you can simply reply once you send it or whatever. It'll dismiss and you continue to where you left off. Also, the dialer is the new KitKat one where you know you have to like tap in here and see the calls. You can go to the missed calls. And going in the stats will tell you how long you've been talking to people, but it shows people's numbers, so I'm not gonna go into it. But you can click on all your contacts and it'll show everyone in there as well. And if you click on here, you know you can dial up. I mean it just looks a lot cleaner, it's very nicely done, and I also love the new email, how it's all black. I love dark themes. And it, you know, you just get to see it this way. Also, another thing here, you can leave yourself like voice messages. Hey, don't forget to rate and subscribe and spread the word of the Cool Loser. And I can tap that, and it's saved, and I can play that back. Quick cool things like that you can add to this ROM and <laughs> everything is working perfectly fine. It's fast and I have no complaints about this ROM because everything is running perfectly fine. So my new favorite ROM is Beanstalk on 4.4.2 and the battery lasts forever. I'm at 55% right now and I unplugged it 11 hours ago overnight and I so far have two hours on screen time. So I'm two hours in with screen and 11 hours since I've been, you know, discharging. Same settings I always leave on. I'm always on Wi-Fi though, wherever I'm at, so that might help my battery instead of being connected to 4G or 3G, you know. Sync is one of the battery drainers as well, so if I turn that off, I could probably get up to like six hours. I have no idea how much further I'm gonna get. I mean, turning things off, would just be amazing and I still don't even have the Snapdragon application that will actually increase my battery. This is good enough. I don't even have to get that out of application. It lasts me all day. I love this ROM. So both of my devices here are running on Jelly Bean. Uh, not Jelly Bean. A uh, Beanstalk. And this wallpaper I got from Zedge. And I actually got tired of Touch Wiz. And I'm very happy that I'm back to, you know, the Nexus style because I've been craving a Nexus again. So this will be my ROM of choice for a while. Until next time, just farewell to Cyanogen Mod. I am now loving Beanstalk. Alrighty guys, see you guys later.